when there is no internet access. It's very easy for us as developers to assume that internet access is ubiquitous and we can always um, query database from our front end and send new data or fetch new data. For example, you have an Angular app running in a browser and the user clicks on a button, um, you want to make a request to the back end, but if there's no connection to the back end, your app's probably going to throw some kind of error and you have to handle that, have to show that to the user, and either your app might break in unexpected ways or um, the user will just have to wait until um, you continue working. Um, so there is an alternative approach to that, which is called offline first, which is what I'm going to talk about. Um, the idea is that being offline should not be an error condition. So it's a different way of thinking about the app where you assume that you're going to store some data locally on the front end, and cache it and show that to the user. And at certain times, um, you sync with the back end and fetch new data and store new data. <coughs> a lot of native apps already do that. I mean, if you have Spotify, and you are not able to stream music while you're offline, but you're still able to um, edit playlists and stuff like that, and it will be synced, for example, with your mobile um, version or any other client when you have internet access again. So what are the advantages of this approach? So the first one is quite obvious that you can actually build apps that are um, being able to be used if you don't have internet access. This is an example that I think is very cool. <coughs> um, called Hospital Run. It's an open source software for developing world hospitals. So the idea is of this app that um, you can take it into areas, where rural areas, where you might not have any internet access at all, and you collect healthcare data, and then when you get back to like a medical facility where you have internet access, the data will sync up again and sync with all the other clients who can also use that data. So this is great, <coughs> but the point is not that you can only use this approach when you're somewhere where you might not have internet access. Um, there's a lot of other advantages to thinking about that, like that, about your app, which is there's a lot of potential to make your app faster, more responsive, and to also save bandwidth, because you're going to batch the calls to the back end and only make them at certain times. There's also um, a lot of ways that you can increase or um, better the user experience this way, because the user will, um, if there's no internet access, like he will be presented with cache data, and be informed if there's some data that you have to get from the server which is not available, which is going to happen as well, I will be informed about that and can still continue using the app. So that's the idea behind this. <coughs> and um, now I'm going to introduce PatchDB, which is um, one technology that enables you to build apps that um, store the data on the front end and sync up with the back end. So PatchDB is a JavaScript um, database that runs in the browser. <coughs> And it also is able to sync up with a back end uh, automatically. So this was what it's going to look like um, if you structure your app with PouchDB. So you have a front end. You can think of this, for example, like a browser um, running some code, front end code that you um, give to the browser. And you have PouchDB running in, in the browser. So if you store data in PouchDB, it will consist if you close the tab, if you close the browser window, or even if you restart your machine, depending on the environment. So this is stored on the front end. Then you can hook it up to a backend server um, for replication. So the data will be sent from the front end to the back end <coughs> and stored there and synced up with other clients. The back end data server is going to be running, in the case of PouchDB, the back end server is going to run CouchDB with C, um, which is a NoSQL database. Um, it's very similar to how MongoDB works. Um, but um, there's some differences, but for the purposes of our presentation, I think um, you can think of it as using MongoDB. Um, another cool thing that PouchDB does, you can um, listen to changes from the server. So if another client um, syncs their data to the server, the server will push the data uh, information back to the front end, and you will get these changes without that you have to query the database again. So this is kind of the architecture of how an app would work using CouchDB. <coughs> and I'm going to show you some code, um, how you would set this up. It's very simple. There's just three steps. The first step is just creating a database. It's literally one line. And you can start putting um, data documents into your database. As I said, it's a NoSQL database. So we can use just plain JSON objects. We don't need a schema and store them into the database. The second step is we hook it up to our backend for replication, like this. 
So when there's data changing on the front end in PouchDB, this will be synced automatically to our backend server. And as a third step, we can subscribe to changes on the database. So with this code, we can kind of hook up a callback function to any changes that are happening on the database and uh, react on our front end and render the view. So with these three simple steps, we have set up PouchDB. Um, so as I said, PouchDB is a JavaScript um, database, so it will run everywhere where JavaScript runs. I mean, example with a browser, but this could also be a mobile app using, for example, something like PhoneGap or a desktop app or a server app, and you could use the exactly the same code um, running on each of these environments. You don't have to change the code because PouchDB will abstract away um, the kind of storage mechanism that is on the line. Yeah, so that's the idea how it works, and I'm going to show you a little example. <coughs> so I fired up a um, simple to-do app. It's two different clients that are connected it's like to my to-do app. There's a node server running which serves up the HTML, and there is also a CouchDB server running which um, plays the role of the replication server, so where we're going to store our data on the back end. So if I add a new to-do, <coughs> I press enter, a lot of things happen very fast. So I added a new item to the to-do list on the client on the left. It's being saved into PouchDB, pushed to the backend server, which in turn pushes the data to the other clients on the front end. It's been updated on the other client instantaneously or nearly instantaneously. But now I'm going to simulate what's going to happen if I lose connectivity. So I'm going to simulate this by turning off the backend server, the CouchDB server. So now the front ends don't have connection anymore to the back end. Now if I add another to do, we see that it updates on the client, which is what we expect. It's um, saved in the PouchDB, but it's not being pushed to the server. So the other client doesn't know about it. But for example, I can close this tab, do something else, and come back to it, and the data is still going to be there. That's the cool part about it. And now, um, if I go back and turn my server on again, and refresh, I will see that the data is being pushed to the backend server, it's replicated and pushed again to all the front ends. And this is how it works. And just to show you where the data is actually saved, so as I said, PouchDB abstracts away the actual layer or the, the storage mechanism. Um, but in this case, it's saving it in uh, IndexedDB, which is a database running in the browser, like locally on the machine, where you have, um, where you can see the data that I have been storing. Um, it's keeping all the versions of all the data I already had. That's why there's so many items in here. But these are all the to-dos that I have added or deleted or edited on the front end for this, for this client. So yeah, that was demonstration. Um, I'm already at the end of my talk, so I think the two big things that I would like you to take away from this is first, um, when you start designing a new web app, I would urge you to consider offline first and think if it makes sense for your app and what kind of capabilities you want your app to have um, if there's no internet connection. And the PouchDB, which is a technology that enables you to um, store data on the front end while you're offline and keep it in sync um, with your backend um, when you have internet connection. That's from my side. Thank you so much for your attention. Any questions?